Sepulta. No, Father. The Dreadsails plan to attack Vastir. What? Mere pirates can't breach our walls. Once Archdruid Orlaith finds the Stone Lore Seed, the Fire Song and the Dreadsails will combine forces and strike. We must prepare. The Dreadsails think to breach Vastir's walls. Never. But they might have the numbers to overwhelm us, especially with the Fire Song at their side. We need more defenders to stand with us. By the green, I hope so. The Stone Lore and Elder Tide Druids, they're in as much danger as we are. Perhaps more so because the Fire Song want their sacred seeds. We need them to help us defend the city. And that's where you come in. While I help my father prepare the city's defenses, I want you to find the Arch Druids and secure their assistance. In exchange, they'll gain a place to protect their wounded and their seeds. Start with Archdruid Raval of the Stone Lore Circle. Archdruid Raval is in the Vine District, the Druid section of the city. He should be able to tell you where to find Archdruid Elec once you secure his agreement to help. Meanwhile, I have much to do to prepare the city for the coming assault. Everything in my power. We've never faced an invasion of this scale before, but Vastir isn't defenseless. We have knights, walls, and the advantage of foresight. We can set barricades, prepare traps, and get non-combatants to safety. No. That's why we need the druids to help defend the walls. Vastir cannot fall to the Dreadsails. That's an intriguing idea. She does seem to be willing to assist us. It was her warning that alerted us to this impending attack. I doubt she'd help us out of the goodness of her heart, however. And House Mornard would be willing to hire her services. We're not above employing mercenaries, as you well know. The point may be moot, however. We don't know how to get a message to her or even where she's hiding. We can only ask for their aid and hope, my friend. Druids may not be warriors by tradition, but I know they aren't cowards. And they can fight. I've seen what the Elder Tide can do, and I know the Stone Lore will protect themselves when necessary. In that aroma, folks. That's the Chef Razi's guarantee. You there, traveler. You look as adventurous as my taste buds. Care to help the greatest chef in Tamriel with an urgent task? <laughs> I was wondering if I'd see you again, adventurer. Ah, Druidkin. I heard what you did. How you secured the Elder Tide Seed and returned it to the care of Arts Druid Elec. Once again, you prove to be a true friend of the druids. But what is this I hear of an impending attack on the city? Hmm. Stefan needs to bolster his army, and wants to do so with the Stone Lore and Elder Tide. I suppose that makes some sense. We can defend ourselves. And it is our third circle that has gone rogue. I can pledge the Stone Lore to this cause. Let me talk to Elec. If anyone can convince him to bring his people to the city to help defend its walls, it's another Archdruid. Instead, I want to send you to Glimmertarn. Laurel and most of Galen's Stone Lord Druids are in Glimmertarn. Inform her of the plan and tell her to prepare our circle for war. I'll meet you there after I convince Archdruid Elec to do the same. The village lies directly north of Vastir. Perfectly. I gave it to Free for safekeeping as a spirit forged from Ifrae's will, who better to protect something so sacred. <laughs> They've been quite curious about it, said they felt a connection and wanted to study the seed.
You'll have to ask free yourself. A return to Vastia right after delivering the seed. The way free communicates is still perplexing. I believe we learn more about one another with every passing day, but many mysteries remain. The request came from Stefan, and my circle loves him as one of our own. Plus, the Fire Song attacked us as well, and we feel a responsibility for our misguided brethren. Besides, I am their Archdruid, and I have already agreed. The matter is settled. An outsider? Well, if this is Ifre's will... Come here, please. You'll be all right. Just lie still. Damn those path traders and their dread sales lackeys. They're everywhere. The fire song attacked these elder tide before they could reach the shelter of this camp. But you look like you came with a purpose. Tell me what news you bring. That's unexpected. We normally don't get involved with wars and politics, but the fire song started this. So I guess that makes it a druid problem. Look, we're practically surrounded by the Fire Song and Dread Sails out here. I could use your help. We need to light the beacon that will gather every Stone Lord Druid on Galen to Glimmertarn. However, the Dread Sails grabbed the Everflame Torch in a recent raid on the village. We need that enchanted torch to ignite the beacon. The Dread Sails have a beachhead at Broken Ore Cove, just northeast of here on the shore. Retrieve the Everflame Torch, and meet me at Vale's Bluff to the west. That's where we need to go to light the beacon. Head to Broken Ore Cove and retrieve the Everflame Torch. There's a path to the east that leads down to the shore. Then, meet me at the beacon at Vale's Bluff. Be careful. Our enemy is as thick as weeds once you leave the safety of this village. I've helped the worst of the wounded. Most of them are more shaken than they are hurt. But I doubt they would have survived if they hadn't made it to Glimmertarn. The beacon is used in times of danger to alert the Stone Lord Druids spread across the island and summon them back to Glimmertarn. The enchantment contained in the Everflame Torch allows the beacon's light to be seen from anywhere on Galen. Many, many seasons ago. I was so young I barely remember it. I recall being scared. 
There was some sort of rabid creature roaming the northern half of the island. Anyway, it's rarely used and only in extreme emergencies. I think this counts. I think so. But I lost track of Free when the Elder Tide started pouring into the village. I'm sure they found somewhere safe to hold up. Let's trust in Free. We can check on them after we light the beacon.
Good quality there. The beacon's ready. Do you have the torch? It's worse than I thought. I saw more than my fair share of bodies on the way here. I'm sure you did too. If we don't hurry, those poisonous thorns will have the numbers to overwhelm Glimmertarn. Blight! Of course. Why else surround us? Why else steal the Everflame torch? At least they haven't made it to the beacon. It's ready. It will call the Stone Lord to Glimmertarn like a songbird guiding them home. Did you get the torch? Good. Then go ahead and ignite the beacon. Hurry, before any of those dread sails spot us. It's done. Let's head back to Glimmertarn and prepare my people for war. I hope to be done here soon. You lit the beacon. Good work, Laurel. Ah, Druidkin. Thank you for assisting Laurel. I spoke to Elec, and he agreed to bring his Elder Tide to help defend Vastir, so I made my way here to lead my own people to this city. But first, we must attend to the matter of the Sacred Seed. I'd like you and Druid Laurel to make sure the Seed and Free are all right. Laurel believes Free took it to Cloage, an old cave they visited often since coming here. We had mostly forgotten about the cave, but Free seems drawn to the place. By Ephraim the Green, I can rally my people and the Elder Tide who seek refuge here. I need you and Laurel to check on Free and the Seed. With the Dread Sails and Fire Song scouring the area, it's only a matter of time before they're discovered. Cloage is just to the east. Please hurry. If the Fire Song find that cave, they'll stop at nothing to capture Free and our sacred Seed. Not a great deal, unfortunately. It may have had some significance in the past, but now it's just an abandoned, overgrown cave. No one paid it much mind until Free arrived at the village. You know, I never had the opportunity to ask. Free did love to explore the place, though. Took Druid Laurel along a few times, I believe. Perhaps she can tell you more. The beacon has been ignited. I must give our Druids time to make the trek from all points on the island. Plus, we have weapons to gather, supplies to pack. Don't worry. We'll get to the city before the attack begins in earnest. This is Stone Lord territory. My people know paths and trails that should allow them to avoid most of our enemies. And if all else fails, they know how to fight. That's why Stefan asked for our assistance in the coming battle. Laurel, go with our friend. Make sure Free is all right. Begin gathering your belongings. We'll make for Vastir once everyone has arrived.
Hang on. Let's talk. Blight! I saw a group of dread sails in Firesong enter the cave just as I arrived. Not sure if they spotted free or simply got curious, but this isn't good. We need to get in there. Free and the seed are in danger. Not that I'm aware of. There are some druid carvings and such, but I haven't had a chance to study them. The whole place is overgrown with vegetation. The cave did fascinate Free, though. Something kept drawing them back here. A few times, yes. I'd try to clean up a little while Free looked around. Sometimes they'd sit and meditate for long stretches. When we find them, this time I'm going to ask what that was all about. Now let's go help Free. Free cleared out a lot since I was last here. That, or the Fire Song have been tearing things down. Wait! Vines covered that section before. that? Free? And those are weirds around them. What does it mean? Look, another marker. We need to examine it. The sacred seeds. And free. Growing them into a crown, a staff, and a gauntlet. Let's keep looking. Another marker. Examine it, but watch out for the fire song. A druid, holding the staff and gauntlet. And Free places the crown upon their head, just like in the prophecy. We need to find Free. Now! Ward protects that far door. Did Free cast that? We need to find a way to open it. Free used an ancient druid trick. I've seen this before. There should be two druid stones in here. If we turn them, the ward should dissipate. There should be another stone nearby. Let's look around. should be open now.
Look, that's free on the other side of the chamber. It worked. Secrets remain buried. They gnash with sharpened teeth, claw at the doors. But now, druid laurel, lavender and wood smoke, familiar. And you, battle on the touch of leaves. I kept seed safe, but protections wither. Free is free. Place made by Druid King. Sang to me. The walls taught me. Told me who I am. The sower of the sacred seeds. Curator of the regalia. When season is right, I will grow them from the seeds. Expected the seed to be safe here. It was not. The Druid King called free from the green, bound us to one day reforge the regalia. So the seeds when three circles become one. That is my purpose, a tender to the garden. But events are uncertain. The seed is not safe, even here. What can we do? Good. I am thinned, tired, wilting. I have grown too tall. Take the seed to Archdruid Raval, his to nourish now, to protect, slip within the walls, face the storm. Claim the seed and let us leave this place. The seed rests just over there, safe, waiting. A quiet and strong thing, resting in different hands. Give it to Archdruid Raval when we leave here, to take it into the unnatural walls. Yes, long ago, it was a... sanctuary, lost to time. But it held answers, the truths of me. The longer I stayed, the more I learned, remembered. My hands alone can ordain. I grow the seeds. That was what the Druid King told me, what the dream tells us all. When the Druids are ready to be whole, streams pouring into one river, not fractured, not grasping for seeds with bloody fingers. I am awake, but the season is... wrong. I... do not know. I just know that I alone can grow the seeds. A ritual, hallowed ground, three sacred seeds, three powerful symbols. They will sprout a crown, a staff, and a gauntlet, the Druid King's regalia. Perhaps for a new king to wield? Magic? No, not like you're thinking. Symbols of office, authority. Only I can grow, only I can sow the seeds, the sower. Still, we must keep the seeds safe. Archdruid Orlaith must not claim them. Just in case I am wrong. You did good, Free. But you look exhausted. Free is fine. All regrows. Laurel, friend. Take the seed. Return to Glimmertarn with the seed. I'll make sure Free gets out of here safely.
The Stolnor have pledged themselves to the defense of Astia. We leave shortly. Our brothers and sisters have arrived, summoned by the Beacon. We're just about ready to make the trip to Vastir. We will help defend the walls, and in turn, the walls will defend our injured. Now, Free tells me you carry our sacred seed. Despite the efforts of the Firesong and the Sea Elf allies, we still possess our sacred seed. I fear this means that the assault on Vastir will begin soon. Now, Sir Stefan, here. That bodes ill. Perhaps you should speak to a druidkin. Good. Once we hear Stefan's news, I'll order our druids to head for the city. I think druid Laurel and Free should remain here, however, to guide any stragglers and to keep the nature spirit hidden from Archdruid Orlaith. Thank you again, friend. Good. I made it before you headed out. Friend, we need to speak. Thank the Green I caught you here. I feared I might be too late. The message I bring was too important to give to just anyone. And I know paths across the island that only the Druids can walk. But first, what's the situation here? I hoped I could count on Archdruid Reval, but it's good to hear those words. Even with the secret paths, though, it was difficult avoiding our enemies. The wilderness is thick with dread sails and fire song. I assume you helped settle things here. I knew you were the right one to send to Glimmertarn. Thank you for helping Laurel. You're a most valuable ally. Here, take this. The least I can do for your continued efforts. Meanwhile, I'll make sure Raval and the Seed get to Vastir safely. Now to the reason I came here to find you. I made contact with Captain Siravane. She agreed to help defend Vastir, but only if she can recover her ship from the Dread Sails. We'll have to hurry. I fear the Sea Elves and the Fire Song will strike soon. An outsider? Well, if this is Ifre's will... Come here, please. Outsider, I fear for my wife, my Gwenael. A group of Firesong druids attacked our home in Ifre's path. I managed to escape the slaughter, but Gwenael's still in there. I tried to go back for her, but the path has grown more dangerous. Yes, outsider. Animals lash out. The spirit motes that once inspired us blanket the land in a thick fog. 
The spirit of the path may be injured or frightened. I do not know what the fire song want or how they turn my home against me. The spirit of Ifray's path. We call it the Chronicle. We Elder Tide made our home here to care for and tend to the spirit. Outsider, I'm trusting you. I'm putting my wife's safety in your hands. Help me find her, and I will see you well rewarded. The entrance to the path is just over there. I'll meet you on the steps down into the Sacred Valley. There we can find out what happened to my Gwinnell. But first, let me bless you against the dangers within. Besides the Fire Song Druids, the very air is thick with spirit motes. You'll see them once we enter the valley. The worst are the animals, though. They frighten me. Crocodiles, wolves, ursocks, among others. The animals in the path are usually docile. We feed them, care for them. Now they attack without provocation. For things to be so out of balance, it goes against my understanding of nature. It started after their attack, but I've never seen a druid who could control the spirit motes before. Only the Chronicle commands them, chooses when to release them, and what story they carry. I have no clue what's happening here. Yes, we're members of the Elder Tide Circle. You're fortunate that I need your assistance. Outsiders aren't usually permitted to set foot in our sacred sites. But if Ray sent you, so who am I to question that? Three, Elder Tide, Stone Law, and Fire Song. Stone Law are adequate druids, but they stay close to betraying the true way. Accepting outsiders? <laughs> the Fire Song are reclusive, but they never attacked other druids before. You're not a druid. You don't belong on the Sisters Archipelago. Still, I'll set aside my animosities for Gwinnell. She's my bubbling spring. She soothes the burns of life and cools my harsh temper. We need to save her. I've been searching the perimeter of the path since the attack, and I've seen no one else. I can't believe I left without her. If I'd only stopped to see if she followed, she'd be safe. If she dies, I'll never forgive myself. Ifray's path is a sacred place, with a small community of druids to look after it. Ifray set the spirit here, the one we call the Chronicle. It shares stories with us, shows us events that happened long ago. Through the blessings of the spirit modes, Ifray is the storyteller. All of nature comes from Ifray, but so do our tales and songs. The Chronicle utilizes both aspects of its creator. Articles released by the Chronicle. Normally we breathe in the gift of the spirit and experience the story it wishes us to see. A vision, you might call it. Perfectly safe. Except I've never seen such large clouds of spirit modes before. Oh, Ifray, let no overcast skies or snaring vines cloud the intention of our thoughts. Storms have mercy. The moats are even thicker now. Looking forward to seeing what you make with that.
Druid Senna saw the moat cloud form? It's like nothing I've encountered. She's not here. That's some small relief. We found some troubling things outside her. We found the last notes of Druid Senna and a group of dead Elder Tide. But my Gwinael is still among the missing. What do you think, outsider? What do your non-Druid senses tell you? Yes, the Chronicle grows plants called Muse Mouths which release a small amount of spirit motes when we commune with it. The motes show us the stories. They've never threatened or harmed us before, and they never appeared as great clouds either. Other than the thick concentration, I'm not sure. Druid Senna mentioned that the fire song caught in the fog lowered their weapons and then marched off as if in a trance. This is very strange. No, but the others all lived in our community. And from the looks of it, they were killed by the Fire Song attackers. They must have been surprised. There are no Fire Song druids among the dead. But there's also no sign of my wife. Not finding my wife could mean anything. All we know is that she's not here. She could be anywhere. But yes. Let's go check the waterfalls to the north. That's where Druid Senna's note said the Fire Song Druids went after the spirit modes descended. The waterfalls? I'd rather not discuss the waterfalls. That area is very private, not a place for those outside our circle. Still, if that's where the Fire Song Druid went, we need to check. There were a lot of them in the raiding party. They must be somewhere. Come on, the waterfall's on the north wall of the valley. Let's keep looking. We're alive and they're not. That fire song Lord, get it out! Talk to her, outsider. This won't hold her long. Must go. Join. It calls me. The spirit of the path. It calls to us. We must go. Defend it. Protect it. Attack. Frightened. It needs us. It must be defended. Defend! Defend! Wait! Not in there! Look. Over here, outsider! It appears that the spirit modes do more than just tell us stories, outsider. That fire song druid's mind was clearly being influenced, if not outright controlled. But why is the Chronicle doing this? It never exhibited hostile behavior before. 
The blessing I bestowed upon us before we set out must be keeping the moats at bay. Given the power we just saw, I'm not sure how much longer that protection will last. I suppose you'll need to accompany me into the tunnels. It is a sacred place, outsider. The tunnels lead to ritual chambers, the muse mouth plants, and to the spirit of the path, the chronicle. Hopefully, my Gwinnail is also somewhere inside. That platform. Not the forest break to it here. A muse mouth. It has a story to tell us, outsider. I can sense it. Examine the plant. My gift to you. Tell us how to access the Chronicle, or this is your fate. No! How could you? Gwinnell? And the Chronicle? Did you see it too? The spirit is trying to tell us something. It raised bones. What happened to the Chronicle? Outsider, this is the Chronicle. The spirit we commune with. But it's grown dark. Can you feel the anger radiating from it? The sadness? I don't like the looks of this. The Chronicle's always been more emotional than other nature spirits. It comprehends the experience of mortals and feels our emotions vicariously through the stories it shares. I've felt its calm, its joy, and even its grief. But this... Perhaps, but there's a depth to this emotion I've never felt before. It unnerves me. Let's hurry. My Gwinnail is in here somewhere, and my fear for her safety grows with every passing moment. The door is just over there. Another muse mouth plant. I sense the Chronicle has more to show us.
You refuse to give us Ifrae's gift? Very well. We will just kill you and take the Chronicle. We can't just give you the Chronicle. The spirit is bound to this sacred place. Then we'll cut the Chronicle from the roots and... <coughs> What's happening? <coughs> spirit monks. <coughs> Spirit mode saved Gwinnell? But why do the Fire Song want the Chronicle? The Chronicle blessed us with another vision. We saw the Fire Song attack Elder Tide, threaten us to gain possession of the Chronicle. All this bloodshed. That could explain why the Spirit feels so guilty. But the moats, it saved Grinnell. Nature spirits. Especially ones as strong as the Chronicle are known among the Circles. While the Fire Song rarely leave Iphelon, they've always been aware of our spirit. Some even traveled here to partake of its stories. Obviously, the Chronicle is capable of more than we ever gave it credit for. Recording and showing recent events, influencing the minds of people and animals. But why druids would want access to that kind of power? I can barely speculate. They want our sacred seed? Whatever for? It doesn't matter. If they wanted to learn more about the sacred seeds, then the Chronicle would be a good entity to ask. It must have stories from the age of the last druid king. Such a high concentration of spirit motes is dangerous. The blessing won't protect us from this. Worse, vines seal the doors beyond. I think I have an idea, though. The muse mouth plants in the room ahead are bloated, spewing out huge clouds of spirit motes. I can remove the vines that block the door, but I'm too old to withstand the motes in such concentrations. Luckily, I have a few vials of Ifray's rain. Purified water from a sacred waterfall. Gwinnell uses it to awaken those who sometimes get lost in the visions. The water causes muse mouth plants to shrink and close up for a time. Even ones bloated as much as these should react the same way.
I'll clear the vine. What's happening over there? Those druids. They're transforming into forest wraiths. How is that? Gwenael. No, not you, please. Gwen. A forest wraith. No! My Gwenael, my guiding light. We were so close to reaching her, and she slipped through my fingers. The spirit turned her into a forest wraith. Legends tell us that the green and its spirits can summon forest wraiths to protect themselves. The Chronicle felt threatened, so it did the same. I'm not sure if this is how all forest wraiths are created, but we saw what the Chronicle did. Possibly. The Chronicle transformed Gwenelle into one of those things. It should be able to turn her back and return her to me. I know I've asked a lot of you, but please come with me. We need to talk to the Chronicle. Convince it to release her. All right, outsider. Let's go find my Gwenael and convince the Chronicle to transform her back into my beloved wife. The newly created wraiths went farther into the tunnels. We keep moving and I'm sure we'll meet up with them shortly. As for recognizing my wife, she may be a creature of darkness now, but I know I'll be able to identify her when I see her. Mouths? Use Ifray's rain on these as well.
I'll deal with the door. my Gwen just ahead. Outsider, the Chronicle won't talk to me. You must convince it to let us go. Druids attacked! Why spill blood on holy ground? Afraid, confused. Actions come as waves crashing against the shore. Story unclear. Tell again, druids of the path attacked, killed, chronicle shocked, angry, spirit most released, cannot hold back the wind, created wraiths to defend the path, lost control. Gwen, I know you're in there. Just hold on.
Gwinnell, you're back! Hitov? What happened? Everything is fine, Gwinnell. Outsider, come. We owe you so much. I can hardly believe my eyes. My Gwinnell. As radiant as the day I first set eyes upon her. I thought I'd lost her. But the Chronicle, the spirit of the path, what a terrible price to pay to set things right. You did what it asked of you, what you had to do, but don't despair. I felt its anger slip away. Its intentions were pure, outsider. Things just got out of hand. It was the actions of the Fire Song that tainted the spirit, corrupted it. It used its moats to try to stop the Fire Song, created the wraiths to protect our home. But it knew it went too far, like a bee whose sting causes its own death. It reacted in desperation. I hope it finds peace now, back in the green. Yes, Gwen is strong. She'll recover quickly. But she would have been lost to me without your help. Please. Except this. You ended a great danger and rescued my Gwinnell from a terrible fate. I just wish the Chronicle was still with us. We may have lost the Chronicle, but my Gwinnell is safe. And all because Ithray chose to send me an outsider. Life is strange, my friend. We'll rebuild. Ask more Elder Tide to join us. For too long we've relied on the Chronicle to show us our past, to tell us our stories. It's time for us to take responsibility for our own memories, I think. It will be, once the spirit motes disperse and the remaining Fire Song are driven off. Without a spirit, Gwen and I will become the Chroniclers. We'll remember and record our stories and our history. Share it with all who wish to hear. Did all that really happen? The Fire Song, the Forest Wraiths. The Chronicle saved you, in its own way. It was angry, that much I remember. The Bloodshed, our friends. We'll grieve for them, and for the Chronicle. We lost a lot this day. The Chronicle is really gone? Its final act was to release you, dear Gwen. What now, husband? Now, we thank Ifre and you tell our own You are spectacular! Stendar's might flowed through you, I could almost see it! 